Hey folks, uh, this lesson is inverse of functions. Don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. Just uh, when you go to MrMathBlog.com, make sure you click the Integrated Math 2 link and it'll take us to this and you'll see it'll go right underneath right there. And you'll see some more as the, as the year progresses getting filled up. By the time you see these lessons, you'll see lots more. So this is uh, June right now I'm making these lessons. So just trying to get ahead of myself. So here's our question. What is an inverse function? And how do we know it's an inverse function? So definitions, you guys. So a relation is a set of ordered pairs or anything that can be represented as an ordered pair. So the x values are called your domain, and they're the, they're the input. And the y values are called your range. They're the output. And so if you have a function, a function is a special type of relation that pairs every input every x value with exactly one uh, output or y value. This just means that um, uh, an x value can never repeat giving different y values, but the same y value can come from two different x values, okay? You just can't have one x value going to two different y values. So for example, can you see this, uh, this set? Notice these parentheses means we have a set and there's three ordered pairs, so it's a relation. This relation right here, is not a function because the input 1, the x value 1, is giving me two different outputs, 2 and 4 right there. But this one is a function because we got 4, 3, negative 5, 3, 7, 2. We don't have an x value repeating going to say the same y value right here. How about this guy right here? Uh, this set of ordered pairs, 6, 2, negative 2, 5, 8, negative 1, negative 1, fourth, 0. 0.75. I don't have any x values repeating, so um, yes, it is a function right here. Now let me just slide that up right here. Okay, so the function, this is a function and this is a function, but there's different kinds of uh, uh, functions, you guys. This is a many-to-one function because... Uh, because uh, we have uh, 4 giving us 3 and negative 5 also giving us 3, so we have a couple of x's going to the same y. And when that happens, it's called a many-to-one function because at least one of the outputs is being used more than once. Okay, What about this one right here? That I don't have any uh, y uh, repeats right there, so that one is called a one-to-one -one function because no output is ever used more than once right there. So many-to-one function and then one-to-one -one function. So an inverse relation, this is what our topic is about, inverse functions, an inverse relation reverses the pairing of the relation. So if you have your x, y as an ordered pair, then your y, x would be the inverse relation, okay? So if you have a, you know, a set of ordered pairs, then just flip the x's and the y's, and that'll be the, the inverse, okay? And if the inverse of a function is also a function, then it's called the inverse function, and that's what this topic is about. And inverse functions are written like this. So f inverse of x is f to the negative 1 of x. This says f inverse of x. I wish I'd have wrote that there, f inverse x. Okay, so if the inverse of a function is not a function, then we just call it an inverse relation. All right, so so here we have uh, this is a mapping of a function right here. So here's an ordered pair it's negative 4, negative 2, 0, negative 3, 1, 2, 4, 1. So this is a function because all of these x values go to just one y value over here. Okay, and then so uh, what we're going to do is uh, is this function one to one or many to one? Okay. Well, I don't have um, uh, I don't have a y being repeated right here. Uh, so this one's going to be a one to one because no output is ever used more than once right there. Here's the here's the input. Here's the output right here. And and this output there's not one of them that's being used more than once right there. All right, so we're going to complete the mapping for the inverse of the function right there, and then we're going to answer, is the inverse a function, and then explain. Okay, so if this is the ordered pair, negative 4, negative 2, then we just flip them around. It becomes negative 2, comma, negative 4. We just flip these around. So these red guys are the, it, are the inputs now when they were the outputs of the original function right there. Okay, and so the inputs are going to become the outputs over here. So we just switch around the x's and the y's. Does that make sense, you guys? All right, so, so here's the inverse of that function right there. And is this inverse a function? Does every x go to only one y? Yes, it is. So 
Uh, the inverse is a function because each input, there's only one output right there, okay? All right, so here's a mapping that shows a diagram, uh, mapping diagram show a function and it's inverse right here, okay? So here's a function, full, negative 4, negative 2, 0, negative 3, 1, 2, 4, 2. This is a function because there's no repeating x's over here giving me two different y's over here. You can have different x's going to the same y, so this one's going to be a many to one. So the answer this this one's a many to one right here so let's first complete the diagram okay so negative 4 negative 2 becomes negative 2 negative 4 for the inverse 0 negative 3 is going to become 3 0 negative 3 0 1 2 is going to become 2 1 okay and then 4 2 is is 2 4 right there okay so there's that right there and like we said if this one is a many to one because there are two inputs uh, this 1 and this 4 right here gives us the same output too, so it's a many to 1 right there. Is the inverse uh, of the function also a function? Nope, this is not a function because this input 2 gives me two different outputs, and so to be a function, that can only give us 1. So it's, it is not a function because the input 2 has two different outputs, the 1 and the 4. Alright, so here we have uh, the graph of the original function in section B which was this ordered pair right here. It was given in there. And then so, for example, negative 4, negative 2. Here's, here's negative 4, negative 2. That's this point right here. 0, negative 3 is this guy right here. 1, comma, 2 is over 1, up 2. And then over 4, up 1. So here's this function right here. And then um, it's going to have the inverse is going to have a special relation with this line right here. This line is going to become our mirror our mirror, it's going to be a mirror image, our inverse uh, relation. So let's first uh, complete uh, uh, the inverse right here. So negative 4, negative 2 is going to be negative 2, negative 4. This 0, negative 3 is going to be negative 3, 0, and so on. We just switch the x's and the y's. All right, now let's graph these guys, okay? Now check this out, you guys. Can you see? So, so there they are graphed right there. There's the inverse graph and all those blue guys right there. Can you see the blue guy is a mirror image of the original dot right there? Look at this. See, look, if I went straight across, it would give me a mirror image. If I took this point and went straight across, it would be this mirror image, or this is the mirror image of that. Every blue dot is a mirror image of the black dot right there, okay? So um, uh, to answer this, what do you observe about the graphs of the function and the inverse in relationship to the uh, line y equal x? All right, so it's a mirror image. It's our mirror. So the graphs are reflections across that line y equal x, and they're mirror images of each other. And the reason why is because we're just switching the x's and the y's, so it becomes y comma x. Look, this is, this is 1, 2. This is 2, 1 right there, okay? This is uh, 4, 1 up here. This is 1, 4. And so that's why is they be, uh, we just switch the x's and the, and the y's. Okay, so uh, composition of two functions, f and g, written, and I'm going to say it as I go across, f of g of x, okay? That's what this says right here. So this says f of g of x is a new function that uses the output of g. So whatever we get out of g of x, we plug that in for our input of f of x. So for example, let's consider the two functions f and g. f says we're going to add 1 to the input, and g says we're going to double the input. So if we first find g of 1, okay, g of 1, well, g says double it. So we double 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. So then f of g of 1, since g of 1 equals 2, then I just put in 2 right there. So f of g of 1 is the same as f of 2. And, and f says add 1 to the input. So add 1 to 2, 2 plus 1 equals 3. Let's do it the other way around. Let's find um, uh, uh, f of 1. Let's first find f of 1. Well, add 1 to that. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So g of f of 1 is going to be g of 2 because f of 1 equals 2. So this little piece right here equals 2. So g of 2, and g says double the input, so 2 times 2 is 4. Okay? So, um, uh, that's what the, uh, the composition of functions mean. And then just notice that f of g of 1 is not the same of g of f of 1 right there, all right? Okay, so steps to finding the inverse of a linear function f of x equals mx plus b, okay? So first we just substitute in y right there, y equals mx plus b. Then we switch the x's and the y's around, and then we solve for the new y. So we'll switch the x's and the y's around. This will be x equals my plus b. 
then we solve for the new y, and then we replace it with f inverse of, of x, okay? And then to check, you just uh, you just show that f uh, of f inverse of x equals x, and you show that f inverse of f of x equals x, okay? We'll go kind of fast through that right there. So, all right, so find the inverse function f inverse of x uh, for the given function f of x, and use the composition to verify that the functions are inverses. Then we'll graph the function and its inverse. All right, so let's here's the first one y equals or f of x equals 3x plus 4 all right so let's graph this pretend like it says y equals 3x plus 4 and so y equals 3x plus 4 I'll go up to this plus 4 I'll do it in blue so there's the plus 4 that is the y intercept right there and the slope is 3 or 3 over 1 or rise over run so I'd go I'd go up 3 over 1 well instead of going up 3 over 1 and graphing up here I'm going to go down 3 and to the left 1 and put a point there. That's the same, okay? So I'll connect those guys up. There's the uh, the line f of x right there, okay? And then so now let's go through the steps right here. So substitute in uh, y equals f of x right there, okay? So, and then we're going to interchange. So now we're going to make this x equals 3y plus 4. And then we solve for the new y. Okay, so we get that. So I did minus 4 minus 4 gets me this right here. And then we divide it by 3 divided by 3. So we get y equals x minus 4 over 3. So this, now we're going to replace y with f inverse of x. So f inverse of x. And I wrote it like this so I can graph this. So negative 4 thirds is the y intercept. So negative 4 thirds is negative 1 and a third, which is right about there and then the slope is up one to the right three so here I'm gonna go up one which is right about there to the right three so right about there make a point connect them up there's the that right there let's put in the mirror image line y equals X that goes right up the middle notice how they are mirror images of each other right there can you see this point at zero four it would be reflected right there at 4, 0 right there, okay? This uh, negative 1, 1 would be the same as this point right here, 1, negative 1. They're mirror images. You just go straight perpendicularly, a nice right angle right there, straight across right there, and the same distance. They are mirror images. All right, and then it says to check, verify that um, we're going to plug in we're going to plug in 3x plus 4 into the inverse function right here, and then we're going to plug in the inverse function, this piece right here, into 3x plus 4 and verify that they're both x's, okay? So f inverse of f of x just means I'm going to plug in the f of x function, the 3x plus 4, into the f inverse function right there. And then I'm going to plug in the f inverse function, that's what this is right here, into the f function right here so it's going to go right there okay so there it is right there all right and then um, uh, this plus four and minus four cancels out and here the threes cancel out so we get to that stage and they both simplify to x all right let's try another of these one of these this one will go fast i'll do this in one step okay i graphed them both all right so here we go y equals 2x minus 2 all right so we switch them and make it x equals 2y minus 2 and then we add 2 plus 2 plus 2 we get x plus 2 equals 2y we're solving for y so then we divide by this 2 and we get y equals x x plus 2 over 2 okay so there's my f inverse of that which is this right here so i graph this guy in blue over here down here at negative 2 and then I went the slope is 2 which is up 2 over 1 and then this one I went to the plus 1 right there and then I went up 1 over 2 so there they are graphed right there and then just uh, notice their their reflections across the line y equal x and they, they are reflections every point this point at 0 negative 2 is um, I'm sorry negative 2 0 is the inverse of 0 negative 2 right there 0, 1 is the inverse of 1, 0 right there, and so on. So they're mirror images of each other. And then just make sure that you can check to verify that they are uh, inverses of each other, that they both simplify to be x right there. All right, if you're in my class, that would be your assignment. I hope that makes sense. Take care.